Hi everyone, my name is Hector Minto. I'm Microsoft's lead accessibility evangelist. Uh, my role is essentially to get people talking about disability inclusion and technology uh, across Microsoft products, but also in the innovation space. Uh, and that's why I, uh, I'm delighted to be joined by the team from 3DP for me today. Uh, just a quick one, my name's Hector. I'm Hector. I'm a white middle-aged male with a People are calling it a salt and pepper beard, or a salt and pepper, a little <laughs> bit of black, a little bit of white in my beard. Uh, I'm wearing glasses. I'm a, I'm a proud, bald man. Uh, now, uh, <laughs> I'm going to introduce you to the team from 3DP for me. First of all, let's introduce you to Jason. Hey, Jason. Great to meet you guys. Yeah, Jason Solmar. And Brian. Yep, Brian Flieger. Um, Middle-aged white male with a pretty good beard, a little bit of salt and pepper down here, no glasses, <laughs> and keeping most of my hair. <laughs> yeah, no need to show off, Brian. Uh, okay, so tell us about 3DP for me. I, I, the minute I read about this topic, I thought this is an in-the-moment project. You know, it's been very kind of you know influenced by what's happening in the world around us. So just a few introductory remarks on 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 the project itself. Who wants to take that? Yeah, no, I'd love to share. You know, our heart's desire is to really, you know, take 3D printing and, you know, apply it to really human needs. You know, what what are the needs in, in humanity today? And and so we're focused on hearing aids, which we feel is, uh, you know, tremendous need currently. And brought about, you know, you're working in a very specific part of the world. You've got started in a very specific part of the world. Could you share that? Yeah, no, we, we started, our, our headquarters is based in California, in the USA, but we're operational here in Jordan, in the Middle East. Now, one of the ambitions for all of us in the tech sector is to really challenge the, the pre-existing models of delivery, the pre-existing cost models uh, around assistive technology, and you play really nicely into that, into that, into that part of the conversation. Uh, Awareness and affordability are probably two of our biggest challenges out there in terms of accessibility. So how are you addressing both of those? No, that's that's a great question, uh, Hector. I think in terms of, uh, you know, accessibility and cost, you know, we are really focused on, you know, basically how do we provide additional access in terms of the technology? And so if I can tell a story, um, my old partner who was here for 45 years, he did all the hearing aids in the camps uh, on the Syrian border. And in the developing world, traditionally, it's a very artisan approach where you take an impression of someone's ear, they put it in plaster and heat it up, and then they take that impression out and fill it with silicone, and then they tool it out. It's a very artisan approach, mm -hmm. but it's, it's limited by its capacity. So that's when we really, you know, decided to look what technologies are out there in the world that could help us to do this just a little bit better. And and obviously that's where the cost comes from, right? The 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 some of the human engagement, the time taken to physically build the technology or to build the to build the mold. Yeah, and and that, that's a part of it. And and I think also maybe Brian can you can step in here and share a little bit more from your perspective, maybe. Yeah. So um, turns out that hearing loss is a global health crisis. Um, you know, certainly there are so many challenges around the world with all of the uh, different um, uh, healthcare issues, be it uh, mental health, be it uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know limb loss, uh, be it uh, infectious disease. But hearing loss is um, it, it is a huge and growing problem. There's an estimated 430 million people around the world who have hearing disability, and disability is uh, defined as uh, interfering with one's ability to to interface in communication uh, with somebody else at the distance that we're at now. Of that 430 million, 34 million are children. Hmm. Um, and this problem is growing. There will be over 700 million people with hearing disability by 2050. Um, the challenge that this poses then is uh, in childhood, hearing is what gives people access to education, to uh, socioeconomic improvement, mm. uh, to to employment, as well as to uh, the ability to um, have higher quality of life, make friends, uh, and and you know engage with family. Uh, in your working age, um, having 
hearing loss equates to in uh, developed countries, it equates to thirty thousand dollars less U.S. dollars mm. per year in income. Um, in uh, your your slightly older ages, untreated hearing loss is the number one modifiable risk factor for all cause dementia. So there are implications well beyond someone just leaning forward and say, huh? It has to do with um, the education of children um, and whether or not they grow up to become literate taxpayers. Mm -hmm. Um, it has to do with uh, the employability of adults, and it has to do with uh, uh, you know, issues related to cognitive decline, depression, social isolation, and withdrawal. Uh, so it is certainly a quality of life issue uh, that expands well beyond just a little inconvenience. And I guess in, in, in developed parts of the world where audiology teams, existing manufacturers exist, there hasn't been this drive to kind of completely radicalize the solution. You know, people are kind of, they're making their progress as, as they see fit. I think there's something super interesting about where you're coming out of uh, in a part of the world where you don't have the option of setting up all that ecosystem, that infrastructure, those trained professionals. You've just got to get on with the job. Yeah. So is there something that we could all learn from you in terms of that recognition of you've got to be fast paced, high, you know, rapidly deliverable, you know, is, could we fairly say, you know, the, the, that edge case, you know, in terms of like uh, established markets uh, is where we should be focusing some of our time on, on, on rapidly innovating? Yeah, that, that's a great question. I, I would say, you know, this, this problem is complex and I don't think that just, just one solution, you know, is, is going to tackle the whole thing. You know, we're we're looking at it from a collaborative model, saying mm -hmm. that we can't do it alone, and, and looking at others who would also be stakeholders. Mm -hmm. We can get that into that maybe a little bit later, but one of the big issues is the lack of audiologists, and 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 I think that's a big challenge worldwide. Also, the production processes that we spoke about. So, you know, in terms of you know our approach, we're piloting this year uh, 50 kids using the new technology and. And maybe, Brian, you can share a little bit about that technology yeah. and why it differentiates. Sure. Well, so the main issue that um, in developed world, uh, in the developed countries, access to um, specialized hearing health care is present, but it is limited by, you know, only the wealthy are able to access this, yeah. uh, which is really, you know, it's, a, it's, it's really problematic, obviously. For lots of different reasons but in the developing world that utter lack of infrastructure just negates any opportunity to provide this kind of hearing care and so this is where jason came in with his ideas of doing a 100 percent digital throughput not starting off with that artisan you know plaster and cast and you know hand tooling this stuff and not by taking a whole bunch of donated recycled hearing aids from you know the billionaire manufacturers but this is actually taking very high quality devices that are um, you know on good solid robust devices that are going to last a long time but have these things um, manufactured have the earpieces created using a 100 percent digital throughput there's benefit to having a 100% digital throughput in that you can do orders of magnitude more than you could do if you're doing this one person at a time hand tooling. The impression itself, taking the cast of the individual's ear so that the sound is delivered in an effective, stable, and secure way, mm -hmm. that requires highly specialized training from an audiologist like myself. And as we know, in Jordan, there is limited access to that specialized hearing health care, forget in other areas uh, such as in Syria. And so this is where you can take a non-audiologist, a trained auditory technician who is able to perform a three-dimensional scan of the ear using an ear scanner, and then that is uploaded into a cloud where CAD modelers can exist wherever. It could be the, uh, a large number of Syrian engineers who are hired mm -hmm. to take on this work and work from home or work in wherever they may be, and then produce this piece, then have on-site manufacturing at 3DP for Me's headquarters, where they have a bank of desktop 3D printers that are rapidly uh, producing hundreds of earpieces per day. Mm. You, you just 
jump to my next question because I was wondering, are you a technologist or are you an audiologist? But it sounds to me like you're a technical audiologist, I'm going to call you. You have to be both. Do you? Yeah. Well, well yeah. actually, traditionally, mm. do you, though, Brian? Or, or well, are you saying that you nowadays know, you really need to be? Nowadays, you really need to be. Uh, if we are to enhance healthcare, we have to leverage the technology that is available, apply what we know about how to help people, but do it in a way that does not require, uh, you know, special knowledge that mm. only the man on the mountaintop may have, that this is something that can be distributed to the masses. And that's where an ear scanner, that's where the cloud computing, this is where um, uh, mass manufacturing can occur to meet a, a seriously unmet need, it will never be met unless we leverage this kind of technology. This reminds me of a project we did with um, speech therapy in Romania. And it wasn't that we right. were try we, we couldn't possibly say we were putting speech language pathologists out of work because there weren't any, right? right? There so weren't, it, yeah. it, it's not a choice between people losing their jobs or technology taking over. It's like, are people even getting anything at all? Um, and I think the, mm. the, the balance here is to recognize that what you, the information knowledge you have as an audiologist is absolutely critical here, but we democratize through technology. You know, you can scale absolutely. through the cloud. Uh, this is such a absolutely. cool Microsoft style story. I don't know if you're using Microsoft Cloud, but we'll, we'll talk about that. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Uh, <laughs> um, but it, it's yeah. exactly... I, Hector, do, on. do you mind if I share one thing? Come on in. No, I, I think the other thing that I wanted to highlight was we're really looking at kind of a multi-stakeholder approach and where we have industry partners from the 3D printing industry. Then we have, uh, you know, we know we need a talent pipeline of 3D printing engineers. So mm -hmm. we're building a fellowship model with Stanford and the Technical University of Munich. Mm -hmm. And we also have industry partners like the World Economic Forum tied to local government affiliated organizations like the Higher Council for Those with Disabilities in Jordan mm -hmm. and philanthropy and other NGOs. So kind of building this whole Perfect. stakeholder model where we work together because you can't do it alone. It's too, too difficult. You never get the word out alone, will you? I mean, that's, that's fundamental to it completely. But you've got to have people who feel like they've got um, skin in the game is the phrase I think you know, that, that, that we would use here. As long as everybody benefits. You know, this is for, for some of the traditional manufacturers, this is net new ground you're breaking, you know, and, and we've got to keep saying that. And actually, I would argue that some of the forced learning you're going through in terms of your delivery model is like Tesla in the automotive world. It's like it used to be impossible to think that you wouldn't have a garage with the car that you could get in before you buy it. And they proved that everyone's just buying them online without, you know, by, by seeing somebody else's out there. So, so. You know, there are there are kind of um, analogies with other industries here that, that we can borrow from as, as you grow. Um, I've just been given a two minute warning, so I, I can't believe this has gone so quickly. There's so much to, to cover here. Um, quick bit on call to action, Jason, if you could. Yeah, like w like people watching this, there's people watching live. Hopefully, we're going to share this. I'll share this on my social channels after this. But you know, what do you want people to do next? What's the what's the call to action? Yeah, I think. You know, we've been really lucky to have some great uh, corporate partners in the team at Accenture and, and BASF, and, and there's others that we'll announce hopefully soon. But I, I think we're just trying to connect with people that are like-minded in terms of their desire to see assisted technologies delivered in underserved communities. And we're also ambitious um, in terms of a design project we have in, down the road for lower limb uh, because we were building a state-of-the-art advanced manufacturing facility for a range of assisted technologies, mm. so we're not going to start. We're not going to stop just with hearing aids, but we really feel like we can do additional devices as well. But in terms of call to action, it would just be please reach out and and uh, you know you can check out our website, email us, uh, our social media, reach out to me on LinkedIn uh, if you're interested. I'd love to have a conversation. That's great. Thank you so much for your time today. Uh, and maybe see you in here in person next year. Sounds great. All right. Thanks both. Very good. Thank thanks you. Thank Bye. you, Hector. Cheers.